Tennis Channel wants to introduce you to a fellow who puts all of them in the shade. For some, tennis is just a sport. But to others, it's a metaphor for life. Nobody understands this better than Roger Crawford. When I was born, uh, certainly my parents were, were really devastated by the news of the fact that their firstborn son had a physical challenge. In fact, the doctors told them that they didn't believe I'd be able to walk and I would have great difficulty actually taking care of myself on a day-to-day -day basis. The medical term is called ectrodactyly. It basically affects me from the elbows down and from the knees down. But, you know, really having three fingers, I, I've just gotten so used to it that I just do everyday tasks in my own unique way. My parents' attitude from the very beginning was no excuses. In fact, I can remember my father telling me over and over again, you don't live in Pity City. Take your hands out of your pockets, put a smile on your face, be proud of who you are. They helped me understand at a young age that it was my choice whether I was going to be disabled. It, it was my choice if I was going to, to feel sorry for myself. I became interested in a lot of different kinds of sports. I didn't want to be, you know, that person that had a, a disability. You know, I, I wanted to be like everybody else. Tennis changed my life. That's not an overstatement. At 12, 13 years of age, I was a pretty shy kid, and tennis was a sport I could play by myself. Backboard became like my best friend. He was there about four, five hours every day by himself. And one day, he was getting a drink out of the fountain, and about five or six kids showed up. They asked him, what happened to your hands? Where's your leg? And instantly, Roger just jumped right in, and he said, oh, it was terrible. We were on a boat, my dad and I, and it tipped over, and the alligator got me. And I said, this kid's remarkable. He said, hey, I think it's great that you're playing tennis, and if I can ever help you, you know, I'm always available. And I was like, wow. When I was teaching him, it was very difficult in the beginning. How was I going to hold on to the racket? People often ask me, Roger, how do you hold on to the tennis racket? Well, I've carved out a space in this piece of wood that allows me to place my right finger in between that space, which holds it secure. So on my forehand, for example, I hold the racket against my right elbow with my left hand. I change the racket face by rolling the grip against my right elbow. So if I'm hitting my forehand or my backhand, same thing. Tony just spent hours with me. And, and you know, he never said that something wasn't possible. I said, you get that ball over the net one more time, and the next guy, you win. <laughs> Every available hour I had in the day, I was playing tennis. I lived and breathed the game. The small successes in tennis and the big successes developed his confidence. And that kept me going. That was the stimulus I needed. Yeah, he was a human backboard. He really was. And Roger's win-loss record in four years of high school of varsity tennis was 46 wins and seven losses. After high school, Roger attended Loyola Marymount University where the NCAA eventually honored him as the first person with a four-limb physical challenge to compete in a Division I sport. I believe that Roger is inspirational. He brings a uh, clarity to all the individuals that he meets in regards to what you're capable of doing. After finishing his college tennis career with a 22-11 and 11 record, Roger eventually found his calling in life as a motivational speaker. As you look at my life experience, you can see the challenges that I face, but I may not be able to see yours. It was that experience on the tennis court that really changed how I saw myself. I learned that other areas of my life that I might have thought were impossible now would be possible. I didn't, of course, win every match, but when I walked out on the tennis court and I struck the first ball, I already won. That's how I felt. And now I'd like to introduce you to my all-time favorite tennis player, <laughs> Roger Crawford. That, Thank you, Mary. Your story is so remarkable. The first, I watched it for the first time this morning, and I wept uncontrollably. <laughs> Thank <laughs> Just you. Just one. I, I, I have to start by asking you, didn't you ever feel sorry for yourself? Well, I, sure. 
I mean, sure, there were times that I was discouraged, but I think growing up with the philosophy that everybody's got challenges, Mary, and they just come in different forms. So I really didn't feel disadvantaged, if you will. Tell me that story about how you wanted your father to, to, to write to a teacher and say you needed more time. Right. To, to, I love this story. Right. So uh, I remember trying to use my physical challenge as an excuse, and I, I would tell my parents, you know, it's going to take me at least two days longer to write the paper than anyone else. And they used to say, well, you start two days earlier. Wow. So really, they set those expectations so early in my life, and I, I'm, I'm just so grateful for that. When the, when the kids would ask you what happened to your hands, your feet, it probably was, you probably had different stories. All over, I mean, were there anacondas and sharks Absolutely. involved with your... Right, fireworks, <laughs> whatever, you know, cigarettes. I mean, I, I had all the, uh, all the different stories, you know, make them as dramatic as possible, that's for sure. And then they would accept you. Right, sure, of course. I think it's, if, if, if you accept yourself and, and people sense that, then, then I think they will accept you. You got to tell me the story about how you first figured out how to use a racket. Didn't you have a T2000 that gave you I did. hope? So I walked into a tennis store and I picked up a Wilson T2000. Now tennis fans will remember that racket. It had two Love parallel bars, right? Loved that it. were open and my finger got stuck in the racket. And I thought, "Wow. <laughs> this gives me an opportunity to this is I can hold this is good." And I started hitting against the backboard and I could hold the racket securely and I thought, "You know, this tennis game, it might be something to it. Maybe this is something I can be successful at. And I just would spend hours hitting the ball against the backboard. And it just, as I mentioned the piece, it really changed my life. It, it gave me a sense of, of self-confidence and a sense of purpose. But, and we want to show that racket again, because it is. Right. So you cooked this up, huh? Yeah, so that's the same dimensions as the Wilson T2000. It's just now out of wood. And I use uh, zip ties to hold it securely. That's a pretty good effort. Is, yeah. it, is it right you're the first physically handicapped player to be certified as a teaching pro by the USPTA? Yeah, USPTA. Not, not, not uh, physically challenged, but have all four limbs. Right, so it's quite, a, quite an honor. When you give motivational speeches, what, do you, what is your message over and over again to people? That there's a big difference in life between difficult and impossible. Just because something's hard doesn't mean that it can't be done. And the other message is real handicaps can be overcome but it's the imaginary ones in life that really disable us. I mean, it's the ones from the neck up. So, as I mentioned, my life's not different than their life. We're all gonna face adversity, and uh, I just feel so fortunate to have found the game of tennis, and now to be able to, to speak at various different audiences, it's a tremendous honor. Oh, boy, you're killing me. I wanna be such a better person now, because I met <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Roger Crawford, thank I you so much. That. Thank you.